Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome everybody to Hashtag LNT episode 26 uh, and I'd like to welcome uh, you guys to a fresh and new episode live uh, from the holy city of Karbala. Now okay, you guys remember a few episodes ago uh, where I said take a deep breath uh, before talking about the topic uh, which was risky at that time uh, and intense at the same time. Uh, well tonight, uh, we're probably talking about the riskiest topic out there. Uh, if you already saw the poster or if you're re watching us on Facebook, yes. You read right. Now, if you're watching us on TV, don't go and spoil the fun by checking out Facebook. Do stay on TV, because we're going to talk about a lot tonight, and hopefully we don't offend people, uh, and we shouldn't. But let's go and jump in. What's trending? And we'll be back very soon to talk about the topic today. Welcome again, uh, everybody, for joining us tonight. And... Uh, uh, the meeting uh, with uh, Trump and Un, uh, Kim Jong Un, is now on. Uh, Trump landed in Singapore along with uh, Kim Jong Un, and uh, they're about to meet. Uh, but as soon as uh, Donald Trump reached uh, the airport, as soon as he landed, they were uh, the reporters asked how Trump feels about the summit, and he says very good and very nice. But uh, uh, Trump also said on Saturday a few days ago. He said, I feel that Kim Jong-un wants to do something great for his people and he has the op that opportunity and he won't have that opportunity again. It's never going to be there again. Um, very eloquent, again like 50 times, but um, <laughs> what else is trending? Um, th this, this is very sad because uh, it's, it's um, a, few, a few days ago, uh, the Iraqi government uh, or the parliament they uh, said that everyone that voted from outside of Iraq, their, their, their votes are um, uh, discluded, so they're, they're, they're not included uh, in the elections. And now, what ends up happening, um, an election uh, building uh, where all the votes, majority of the votes are in, uh, was burnt. Now, they don't know if it was burnt deliberately uh, or not, you know, when corruption ha occurs, this is what happens. Um, you know, hopefully we get the, a good government coming into Iraq, but you know, this is, this is sad to see, very sad to see. Anyways, let's go and jump in to tonight's topic. Now, uh, <laughs> before we uh, talk about tonight's topic, Viewer discretion is advised, so if your children are there and if uh, some information might not be uh, there for them, uh, might be disturbing for them, uh, do put them aside, you know, put earplugs in, uh, put their iPods in their ears, I don't know what you want to do. Uh, but, and if you want your children to be uh, educated earlier on in their life, let them continue watching. But the decision is back to you tonight. We're talking about a sensitive topic. Now, tonight's topic is very important. To the level of importance where and, and sensitivity at the same time, it hasn't been yet to be discussed on pulpits and face-to-face -face conversation. We're not talking about jokes between friends who joke around with each other. No, no. We're talking about serious face-to-face -face conversation. But tonight, as I mentioned, very important. And uh, if, 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 if you ask yourself where to look at to talk about this, the, the riskiest topics, you know where to find us. Hashtag LNT got your back. Okay. Now, in the teenage years, after the youth hit puberty, um, they go through physical and emotional changes. Now, we'll put aside the physical change, that's for a different episode, but we'll focus on the emotional uh, effects and, and emotional changes, uh, AKA the sexual changes that go through the uh, youth's life as they hit puberty. Now, through society, internet, somehow, uh, the, the, the introduction of sex to our youth um, has increased, where we see everyone, whether they're teachers, whether they're students, whether they're professors, everyone talks about this topic publicly and freely, talks about sex. Now this, when it's discussed near a youth, it increases their level um, of, of hormones. They, they, they become um, hornier, so, so to speak. Now, tonight's topic, we're talking about a topic that's very important for us, for our youth, uh, and especially for those that are going to hit puberty 
very soon. Now, when a teenager is alone in his room, many things go on in his mind. Um, while he's imagining all of the sexual activities that he hears from his friends, that he hears in music videos, that he sees in, in, in commercials, um, you know, in, in movies, um, don't watch Angelina Jolie's movies, but so on and so forth. So that kind of movies results in the youth's mind sexual imaginations that go on. Then Satan comes in, shaitan, and he tells the, co comes jogging, comes speeding, speedway down, the, down his way. And what he does, he starts whispering to the, to the teen's ear, put your hand where it shouldn't be put in. You know what I mean? If you guessed right, where he should put his hand, keep it to yourself. But the question for tonight, if you're wondering about it, masturbation. Yes, we're talking about that tonight. And your question is, and why was it put so early? I don't know. But why is masturbation wrong? Why is it masturbation wrong? If, if you think it's wrong, let us know at plus nine six four seven seven four zero six seven eighteen thirty six. You can also go on our live Facebook. You can comment there. But that number right there, you should open WhatsApp, dial that number. You can call us live during the show. You can send us a text message. You can send us a voice message. Anyone that does that, answering that question tonight, will have their names. And those who comment on Facebook will have their names placed in this blessed fishbowl written on these blessed sticky notes to have their names uh, drawn at the end of Ramadan. You have only four days left. That's it. Four days left to have your names placed in this uh, fishbowl um, uh, for you guys to win a free trip to Karbala. Now, guys, take a deep breath. We're going to take a break. Take a deep breath, drink some water, because uh, you're going to be thirsty after we talk about tonight's topic. So let's go and take a quick break. Welcome back, dear viewers. Now, uh, if, if you see me smiling throughout the show, it's, it's not because of the episode. It's because of the comments that I will be getting in my ear. Hopefully, I don't get some tonight. But... Um, the question that we chose for you guys tonight is mainly revolving around why it's wrong from a religious perspective. Um, if you were to go scientific, there are a lot of points that says maybe, but we're trying to focus. There are also scientific points we'll get to talk about tonight that say, you know what, uh, masturbation is some sort of, you know, we're going to talk about it. But why is it wrong? That's the question for you guys to talk about and discuss among your friends. Now. Why is it wrong? Why do people have a negative view of masturbation, whether in, in Islam or out of Islam? Number one, it's addictive. The addiction part of masturbation is, is looked at to be negative um, because you know, anything that's addictive may result to abuse. And um, if you go to the internet, there are people who abused uh, masturbation. They ended up having severe damage to their organs. Now, erectile dysfunction, erectile dysfunction, and this is very important to look at at the same time because it's, it's among, uh, but let, let's just put this out there, this is exclusively for men, um, uh, obviously, we don't want to get into astaghfirullah, wow, okay. Now, this is among the prominent uh, side effects of masturbation. Um, men who indulge in this act have an increased risk of suffering from erectile dysfunction um, and, in, and, and this would also affect him later on in life as we'll get to talk about it later on. Now another point or another side effect if you will why masturbation is wrong is premature ejaculation and this is and you know uh, up to now I do repeat again viewer discretion is advised so we're talking about explicit stuff here. Um, premature ejaculation a lot of men suffer from that um, and uh, if you happen to do that act, then stop it because we'll get to convince you, inshallah, at the end of the episode. Now, this is, masturbation is linked to premature ejaculation because the physical action that you're doing um, results in uh, various uh, dopamine and various um, things to, 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 to come out. Anyways, we don't want to talk about that. Yeah, so we got a text message from... Ismet Mahdi from India, masturbation will definitely negatively uh, affect your health. It is an act that is selfish. Okay, thank you very much. 
uh, Esmet Mahdi for joining us once again in tonight's episode. Uh, now, yes, uh, it is selfish, um, uh, but we are saving a few Facebook comments. We'll get to talk about that, uh, read them out later on. And as, as Esmet mentioned, it is selfish. Um, so don't do it. Just go and do something else. Anyways, now, uh, it reduces the, the firmness uh, in some subsequent uh, ejaculations. Um, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm just, you know, uh, going into this very smoothly so uh, nothing slips out and people may, uh, you know, uh, use that against us. Now, one of the points that we need to keep in mind you know, scientifically speaking, if a person does ejaculate, the next time he wants to have sex, it won't be the same as if he, it was the first time he erects. Now, this is, this, this, this is scientifically proven. Now, masturbation doesn't have the health benefits that sex does. And this is very important to keep in mind. This is according to WebMD.com. So it's not just random knockoff website that's, that's mentioning these points. A validated website, credible website that's mentioning these points. And it doesn't have uh, the, the health benefits as sex does. Why? Because studies show that the benefits of sex are a lot. The benefits of masturbation is less. Although people say it's, it's a form of relaxation, that, that's just nonsense. It's, it's, it's a sense of drowsiness that a person feels and then they confuse it with relaxation. Uh, and you can go into the psychology of that and learn all about that. Now, one of the most important things to keep in mind when, when discussing this topic is the, the, the correlation between sex and masturbation. Even, and as, as scientists have proven, the semen that comes out is totally different from the semen that comes out during sex. And that's what a lot of people don't understand about uh, this sensitive topic. Now, another, um, uh, we should throw a joke in right now. Another um, side effect of uh, masturbation is hair loss. Uh, we're not, you know, next time you see a bald person, uh, just ask them, what have you been doing in life? No, I'm kidding. Uh, but according to some websites, um, masturbation does result in hair loss. Um, maybe not to all, but you know, just, just throw that out there according to some uh, websites. Now, another one um, is, is aging. Men who masturbate more than six or seven times a day, so we're talking about a lot in a day, um, that will result in them aging. You're, you're going to have the wrinkles on your face, wrinkles on your hand, definitely. Um, uh, so it will result uh, to aging. Now, let's jump in very quickly and go to look at the Islamic point of view. Now, what does Islam say about masturbation? Um, Islam is, is very firm when it comes to, and it's, it's very straightforward when it comes to masturbation. The Islamic term for masturbation is called istimna. Istimna means the person who, you know, plays with their organs. We don't want to get into you know, it's it, private organs, you know, it's, it's, it's self-explanatory. We don't need to go into how and when and where and why. Um, so it's the stimulation of their sexual uh, organs. Before we continue talking about the Islamic point of view, I just give you a gist of it. I want to go and ask Sayyid Hussain Qazwini, who has joined us tonight, as the expert for tonight, and how he thinks masturbation is wrong. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين قال الله تعالى بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين هم لفروجهم حافظون إلا على أزواجهم أو ما ملكت أيمانهم فإنهم غير ملومين فمن ابتغى وراء ذلك فأولئك هم العادون صدق الله العلي العظيم الله سبحانه وتعالى has put in every human being sexual desire this is something very normal very natural something that is put into every human by Allah Azza wa Jal. and Allah himself 
has put avenues in how to satisfy those needs. Just like the way he put in hunger and thirst in human beings, he put rules and restrictions that you may satisfy your hunger and thirst through lawful means, through halal food and halal drinks. When it comes to sexual desire, Allah who has put these desires in a human being has put the right avenue that you may satisfy these desires in the right way and that way is through marriage. There's no other way. There's no other lawful way of satisfying those desires. So this crosses out the ideas of fornication, adultery and masturbation. Fornication and adultery, we know why. This destroys families, it destroys social relationships, it destroys the community. But why masturbation? It's very simple. When a person is accustomed to self-gratification, will this person be in the need of a partner in the future? Will this person think of getting married in the future? No. If, he's, if he or she has self-fulfillment and self-gratification, that person will not be in need of a family, will not be in need of a spouse. In fact, some people have this habit and they entered into a marriage and they did not give up this habit. That marriage was destroyed. If a marriage is not based on mutual interests, if a husband and wife are not there for each other to satisfy their needs, then that marriage will be destroyed. So many marriages were destroyed because of a, an old destructive habit either with the husband or of the wife and they could not take control of this habit and this habit is, is addictive. It's, it's how the mind works. Some habits are extremely addictive and very hard to, to give up. So when a person has this habit and goes into marriage and self-suffices, that means he's not in need of his wife or the wife is not in need of her husband, this will definitely disrupt the stability of the marriage and can ultimately lead to divorce. Think of it this way. If this habit was natural and everyone were to practice this habit, no one would be in need of marriage and the human race would go extinct. That's the biggest proof that this habit is unnatural and unlawful because it would lead to the extinction of human beings. If a person ha has sexual desires and cannot control those sexual desires and sees himself or herself continuously being tempted by shaitan, then this person needs to go and get married and satisfy those desires either uh, hopefully through permanent marriage and that is that is the desi desired marriage or if that is not accessible then perhaps through temporary marriage this is a habit not just for males even for females and it's uh, addictive for both but it's a habit that a person can overcome with the help of Allah Azza والحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطاهرين Thank you very much, Sheikh Hassan Qazwini, for joining us tonight and clarifying a lot of points uh, that many may were, uh, were not aware uh, of the side effects uh, of masturbation. Once again, we do thank Sheikh Hassan Qazwini for joining us tonight. Now, he mentioned a few points regarding um, uh, masturbation, but we'll get to them, inshallah. We'll get to the Islamic viewpoint um, right after we, we read uh, this um, uh, Facebook comment that we got on Facebook. Now, uh, Ra'ad Abd, he says, uh, from the wisdom of Imam Ali, peace and blessings be upon him, a stimulant from depravity is isolation. Sabab al-fujur al-khulu. So basically what he's saying is um, the, um, the cause uh, of uh, being in such an act is loneliness. So when a person is lonely, a lot of um, things go through his mind. So um, the, the, the solution to that, we'll get to talk about it later on. 
uh, insha'Allah. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned chapter 3, 23. Uh, sorry, yeah, let's write his name down. I forgot for a sec. Um, Ba'd Abd. BD, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Your name is going into the bone, inshallah. Now, going back to the topic. Now, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions chapter 23, verses 5 and 6. He says, the believers are those who protect their sexual organs except from their spouses. Therefore, whoever seeks more beyond than that in sexual gratification, then they are the transgressors. The last line makes sense because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us guidelines, has given us a straight path to walk down. Um, and one of the important things to keep in mind when walking down that path is we don't need anything that deviates us from that path. Now, what do I mean by that? Yes, now a lot of scientists are coming forward and saying that, you know what, there's nothing bad about masturbating. It, it, it makes the individual relaxed. Now, I don't care about what science says. For me, as a Muslim, if science goes according to the Quran, according to the Ahlul Bayt salam, I would take it. But in a case where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving me guidelines, where as Sayyidina Hussain mentioned, if this was a natural thing, which scientists say it's, it's a natural thing that humans do, if this was so natural and so straightforward that everyone can do, then why do people do it behind closed doors? Why do they keep it a secret? Because everything that people do, everyone knows about. You know, if, if two married people are, if, two, if a male and a male, uh, a male and a female are married, people right away know, and if they have children, then they're having sex. If a person is alone, they don't know if, if he's doing that or not. So that we need to keep in mind. A natural, it's, it's not a natural thing, because it would, and it has destroyed marriages. One, and one of the points that Sayyid Hussain did mention is that if this was so natural, then people would not really need to get married. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then goes to chapter 7, verse 179. He says, like cattle, nay, they are more astray, they are the heedless ones. Now, this verse is trying to say that a person shouldn't be heedless. A person should refrain from such acts if a person wants to be on the right path. But we just received a text message from Rismi Turner from Australia. She says, uh, I think self-pleasure is not a sin. Wow, okay. She, uh, you don't hurt anyone. You don't hurt anyone in the process. As long as you do it in private and not being uh, vulgar with camera and watching porn. Thank you very much, uh, Rismi, for joining us tonight. I don't know, that, that's your opinion. Thank you very much. Uh, and, you know, you're not hurting anyone technically, um, but you're hurting yourself. Um, and uh, I, I'll just have to stop it right there. Rismi. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Rismi Turner from Australia. Now, uh, going on to the cure uh, for masturbation, it's easy to say that you know fornication involves two individuals, inv involves a man and a woman, but for masturbation, it doesn't really need to involve another person, it just involves one person. So a person really needs to learn the ways, as we'll get to talk about it inshallah, learn the ways on how to cure that addiction that he has. And Sayyidina Hussain did mention it's not only addictive to men, it's addictive to women as well. So we let, let, let's take a look at um, some of the ways um, that you can um, overcome masturbation. One very important point to keep in mind is strengthening willpower. If a person really can, can comprehend the idea that in order to stop an addiction, ask a smoker, if he wants to stop smoking, he needs a strong will. If a person, if a person tries to stop masturbation, he needs commitment. He needs strong will. And that's very important to keep in mind uh, for tonight. 
The second way you can cure this addiction or you can overcome uh, this act is staying in company of people, of, of, of other people. You don't have to do it, you know, as Imam Sadiq if, if a person wants to uh, refrain from something or get attached to something, let him do it 40 days, 40 mornings and 40 nights. So basically 40 nights and mornings, let him do that thing and then he will be able to gradually overcome whatever he wants to overcome or get into whatever he wants to get into. So keep in mind, always stay around company so you won't fall into uh, that sin. Uh, text message from Farhad Azizi from Canada. Uh, now Farhad says, you should strive to refrain from masturbation. If you are married, then you should be intimate with your spouse, not with your head. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Farhad Azizi, uh, for joining us tonight and letting us know what you think. Very true, uh, very true. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that we see married men actually masturbating, but if there is, bruh, just, you know, and that, and that you have a wife, and if you have kids, that's even worse. Um, so just, just, just put an end to that because you don't need that. Anyways, um, now, uh, another way that you can cure this addiction, that you can overcome masturbation is... Um, adopt sports, go play sports. When you start thinking of sexual activity in your mind, when those images pop up in your mind, right away do something otherwise. Go play a sport, play a game on your phone, play PUBG as the guys play here. Do anything that you want other than masturbation. Try to, to change the way you are thinking as you're thinking it. I know it's hard. The mentality of a person who's addicted to something is very hard to overcome. So what a person needs to do is occupy his time, occupy his self, himself or herself at that time that they're thinking of those sexual activities by playing sports, by joining, you know, a, 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 even a fashion club. You can go join that if you think that's uh, gonna, gonna overcome uh, masturbation. Another one, and the final cure for, uh, for masturbation is get married. Get married. Isn't your hand tired? Stop that. You don't need that in your life. Go get married. And if you think that, you know what, I'm not ready for marriage, I can't handle marriage, uh, and, and your, your, your testosterone is, is hitting the roof, then what you need to do is, oh wow, that comment is, but what you need to do is muta, temporary marriage. You know, if, if, if a person, they, they shouldn't be, or they shouldn't allow themselves to fall into a haram situation. So what they need to do Go find a muta. Go find a temporary marriage. And not just for sex, but for that relationship to overcome that, to overcome masturbation. Well, my dear viewers, the act of masturbation indeed is forbidden within the religion of Islam. And it's looked down upon in every society. And trust me when I say that, even if you're living in the West, if you go up to your boss and tell him, um, or if you have like a conversation, you won't have a person talking about masturbation because it's a sensitive topic and a topic that people really don't want to talk about but hashtag and the chose to talk about it to bring to you the proofs that masturbation is wrong thank you very much for joining us tonight this is Ahmed Ali coming to you live do stay tuned for the upcoming episodes 2 a.m. Karbala time 12 a.m. London time 7 p.m. Washington DC time wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh